took off the mouse feet, unscrewed the bottom two screws. Gonna continue unscrewing. So I unscrewed the top screws as well and this is where I am right now. I'm gonna unplug this in a minute. These are the switches. So these are the three and the three pins I have to free for, from um, solder. And the solder by default when I started looked like this. A nice little blob of solder around each pin. And I removed most of it already. Using this kind of a tool, which is a suction tool, you press it, creating a uh, potential for suction and then uh, you press the button here to actually suck something up from over here. And what we are sucking up, at or at least trying to, is the solder from around the pins. I feel like some kind of professional electrician while working with solder even though I suck at soldering big time. So let me heat up like this one for example. It has quite a lot of solder left in there and as soon as you can uh, after st st you stop heating it uh, you should try to pull uh, the solder off with this suction dinghy because the solder will get hard uh, quite fast after you stop heating it. And you should also avoid heating uh, um, the PCB too much. You should stop uh, between every heating because if you don't you risk uh, overheating the PCB or mainly uh, the ring around the pins and What happened to me and what happened to many people as well I presume is that uh, on my MX518 I've heated too much around this ring and the ring just broke off and That means Your PCB becomes trash because that's the contact point between um, the pin and the PCB so this is how the PCB looks after you'd, you removed all the solder and uh, gently jiggled these out because these will not fall out. You have to jiggle them a little bit, but just gently. Keep removing the solder until you see like empty space around the pins, even when you have them in. Like, I'm gonna insert the Japanese armruns and show you what uh, the Huanos should look like before you try to remove them. So the PCB is thankfully labeled uh, if you forgot about how the original switches were aligned. There's some help for you. So this is how the Japanese armruns look after you've jiggled them into place because they will not just pop in uh, right away. You have to jiggle a little bit. Uh, which is great because that makes them stay there even though you're not holding them and they're not soldered in. And uh, I would push them all the way through as far as you can to touch with the PCB, to sit on the PCB before soldering them in. You don't want a loose uh, micro switch. You want it to be in contact with the PCB and then get soldered in permanently. Or as long as you don't decide to switch them out again. So you should try removing solder until you get to this point with the original switches. If you don't yet see air or rather free space around the pins in the rings uh, you should still be trying to remove more solder because trying to yank the old Huanos out while there's still some solder uh, left in there is gonna do no good to the PCB. Now with that we are in this stage we just have to put some solder back on and uh, reassemble the mouse.
I'm laying down them down flat, pushing on them again to make sure that there's no space. And we can put the solder on using this thingy and the soldering iron. So yeah, with my shitty solder job done, all that's left is putting the mouse back together and uh, playing with it. And uh, of course, realizing that the problem wasn't the cable or the micro switches or anything else, but my own lack of skill. So this is the mouse all locked down and secured. And uh, let me give it a whirl. Well, fucking hell. Probably over tightened. So, what I found out is that you basically set the pre travel with uh, these screws. So, the tighter you screw them in, the less pre travel you will have. The last thing I'm gonna show you, I guess, is what you can do if you've already ordered replacement feet for your Zoe mouse, but you don't want to wait for them to arrive. Well, you can take your old feet and uh, just extend them by using double-sided tape. You put the feet on the double-sided tape, you cut around them, and that will add a couple of microns of... Uh, what is that? Um, extra thickness, yeah, that's the word. And you add one or two layers of double-sided tape and uh, you'll get uh, mouse feet that will be good for another year or so.